Okay, we've got our new Apple Silicon now, and for those of you that are new to what's going on, here is a bit of a refresher on why Apple Silicon chips are better than Intel chips in these latest crop of Macs. Now in this video, I'll talk about a few general things, and we'll also get into some nerdy stuff about RISC and CISC and the processor differences, so stick around for that. Now this new generation of MacBooks and the desktop Macs uses in-house design silicon chips. This is after breaking a 15 year partnership with Intel. So sad. A little background here. Last year, Apple began replacing Intel processors they were using in their Mac computers with their own chips, starting with the M1. So we got a few M1 machines, MacBook Air M1, MacBook Pro M1, and the Mac Mini M1. So these are similar system on board chips to the ones that have been powering iPhones and iPads and Apple Watches for many years now, except now these chips are in our laptops and desktops. And this decision was originally announced at Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference in 2020, which confirmed its switch to Apple Silicon based on ARM Holdings technology or ARM chips for its Mac lineups, and Apple promised a two-year time span to completely make the switch. So by summer of 2022, there should be no more Intel-based Macs around. Well, they'll still be around, just secondhand. So there might be a good bargain to fetch at that time. Now, Apple relies on the world's largest chip maker, which is TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company for its new silicon, which is now also in charge of producing chips for Apple's new laptops and desktops too. Now lately there have been silicon shortages worldwide, as well as supply chain disruptions, and this all adds up to Apple having a hard time keeping their products stocked. Coming to the end of the year now, that's probably bad timing. It's starting to feel a little bit like the old days when you ordered a Lenovo laptop to the United States and it took over a month to come from China to my door. Anyway, in my opinion, that just means we'll be waiting a little bit longer for these machines and paying a little bit more too. All right, now back to the latest Apple Silicon. This indeed is a crucial shift in the world of technology. And I gotta say that this move has already dealt some serious blows to Intel. I'm pretty confident that the new Apple Silicon processors are already outperforming Intel's fastest processors. This is something I've even found through testing different developer tools and frameworks and programming languages on this channel. And a bunch of others confirmed similar results with with benchmark tests and video rendering software, which if you watch YouTube, you've probably seen. The M series chips are significantly outpacing the performance of the latest machines running Intel chips. Apple Silicon processor SOC or system on chip is what it's called, includes various specialty cores, which enhance its capability, replacing the Intel semiconductors that have been a mainstay of Apple computers for the last 15 years. And if you wanna know a little bit more about that, I did a longer explainer video on Fireship's channel not too long ago, detailing the differences between the way these architectures work. I'll link to that video down below. You can check it out. So let's talk about a couple of reasons why that is, including some of the nerdiness I talked about earlier. So far, Apple is the only one that's really come up with a truly 21st century processor compared to Intel, which is kind of stuck in the 20th century mindset. They're starting to turn it around and hopefully by next year, we'll see some really big improvements from Intel as well. So I don't want to completely talk about Intel here because now they are really trying. <laughs> Try harder. Since Intel processors are huge, they consume massive amounts of power and dissipate ridiculous amounts of heat. On the other hand, Apple Silicon processors are tiny, use a minimal amount of power, and so they produce very little heat. Now, Intel should really follow the Silicon Valley motto, authorized by its own co-founder, Andy Grove, only the paranoid survive. Here's a general rule. The smaller the processor, the more chips can be harvested from each wafer. That's how they're made, these chips. They're made from wafers about yay big. And so if they're smaller, the yield is high. And we know that Intel processors are pretty sizable, so the yield is low. And this is why Intel processors, the prices are so ridiculously high, is because they use a lot of silicon, the natural resource. Here's a little comparison for you. Apple's lowest cost processor for use is the Apple Silicon M1, which is more powerful than all the Intel Intel Core i3, i5, i7, and even some Intel Core i9 processors that Intel has previously been supplying to Apple. <sighs> I myself have spent about 4,000 bucks on this 
Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro and only about 1200 bucks on this M1 MacBook Air. And in most of my software developer tests on this channel, the MacBook Air actually destroys the MacBook Pro. The latest chips from Apple are actually equipped with pretty slender five nanometer transistor process, which implies that more features can be packed into a single Apple chip than into a massive Intel processor, which still uses the 10 nanometer process. Now, this could all be changed next year when Intel might start using a two nanometer process, which they've talked about in the news, but I actually haven't seen anything about that. We'll see about that next year, maybe. So definitely subscribe to the channel to get the scoop on that when it comes out. So given all that price differences when it comes to the silicon itself, the MacBook Air with the Apple M1 happens to be the most affordable laptop model at around a thousand bucks at this point. That's for the base model. And I've seen discounts down to 900 bucks. And it also has two times the battery lifespan of a MacBook Pro 13 inch with an Intel Core processor. Now, on on the other hand, the Intel powered model at its lowest price point is still $1,800. And to get the same insane performance in a desktop, a Mac mini with the M1 chip is $650. That's pretty great. No screen, but it's a desktop and it's a lot cheaper. So there you go. Now, in my own tests, I've seen pretty much no difference between the M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini. So grab the one that your budget allows. So taken together, this is what you get with the new M1 powered machines. Lower price point, superior performance, and longer battery life. As a matter of fact, the Apple M1 chips are faster, use less power than the Intel chips, and this was a huge contributing factor to extending the battery life for Apple laptops by several hours, sometimes even double. And I guess it's no wonder the Intel stock has dropped in value so much. Can you imagine that the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip is estimated up to 20 hours compared to the 10 hour battery life of the MacBook Pro 13 with the Intel processor? MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro, Intel M1, 10 hours, 20 hours. All right, remember that nerdy stuff I was gonna talk about? Well, here we go. So there's uh, the type of architecture of the processors themselves. Let's talk about that a little bit. Apple Silicon is known as RISC type of processors, R-I-S-C, or Reduced Instruction Set. Intel processors are still CISC processors or Complex Instruction Set processor architectures. And the M1s are using RISC design, and this is to allow more low-level parallel processing than CIS design previously incorporated in the Intel-based processors. Now, before Apple took this leap, people were a little bit skeptical whether Apple will be able to perform better by moving away from CISC, which has been the standard since 2006. However, at this point, Apple quelled much of the doubt by demonstrating high performance. In fact, the M1 has and continues to defeat the top Intel CPUs in single core tests and has the upper hand over low power chips and multi-core tests as well. So what is this CISC instruction set and RISC instruction set? CISC uses complex instructions as opposed to RISC, which is constructed as a reduced instruction set computer. Now here we're not talking about the amount of instructions. Instead, we're talking about the complexity of instructions uh, of what we're targeting. You can perform a multiplication on a CISC chip with one complex instruction. In contrast, if you're working on a RISC chip, you would need to break this down into four instructions. Two instructions to load the numbers, one to perform the multiplication and one to store the result. Now it's crucial to remember that Apple is not really a first generation RISC architecture. They've been using, working on and improving for years their own silicon in iPhones and iPads. And now they've evolved this enough into their M1 chips for desktops and laptops. This fixed instruction length architecture makes it simple to load a greater number of instructions so you can process more stuff in parallel essentially. It enables users to explore ways to carry out operations in parallel, and this is called out-of-order execution. In the case of CISC, the complex instructions access memory prior to completion of the operation, and therefore executing these instructions in parallel makes it difficult as compared to the more sophisticated RISC architecture. Another valuable addition to the RISC architecture is the inclusion of a very large reorder buffer. The buffer stores instructions for parallel execution. And this process takes place automatically and is transparent to the app developer. It doesn't require any special effort or consideration to specifically write the apps to run operations in parallel. So the M1 chip has an advantage over the Intel chip in terms of more parallel processing without the developers having to do anything, except recompile their code to target the new architecture. 
Another advantage of the Apple M1 over Intel chip is that it includes a large number of instruction decoders. And this is a feature easier to accomplish with a RISC architecture because of simpler fixed length instructions. More decoders break down instructions into micro operations helping in parallel operations. And the question might arise, why Intel? Why can't you add more instruction decoders? Well. The answer lies in the ARM RISC architecture. RISC instructions have a fixed length and every ARM instruction is four bytes long. When the instruction is of similar length, it becomes easier to feed into eight different decoders. And this is not the case in CISC because there are no fixed instruction sets in CISC. Decoders do not really know where the next instruction starts or where it ends. In CISC, this would lead to an analysis of each instruction and wrong guesses and mistakes. This stage would become way too complicated for CISC design to add more decoders. Ultimately, Apple Silicon is modern, has more capability than Intel processors, occupies less space, uses very little power, dissipates a lesser amount of heat, all while delivering massive computing capabilities for each watt of power that it runs on. No wonder Apple is expecting to finish the transition away from Intel and to its own Silicon by 2022. Run like the wind, Apple. Do it, and by the first part of 2022, we'll probably even see some Mac Pros being delivered with some M series chips inside of them too. Apple is also currently working on some high-end graphic updates with 64 and 128 dedicated cores for its highest end machines, and those will probably end up in some Mac Pros as well. That's gonna be insane. And for us developers, that's gonna enable a whole new level of machine learning and AI work that right now we can only get with Nvidia cards, well, Maybe you'll stand in line once you see the prices that Apple is going to charge for their chips, but time will tell. All right, folks, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, make that button gray, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.